They're very unique animals. Uh, all penguins are. They really are very playful, very charismatic animals. They are incredibly charismatic animals with some pretty cool stuff about them. So the African penguin is indigenous to South Africa. Um, it's the only penguin we find here, um, and it's also only found here. We had about a million breeding pairs in the beginning of the 20th century. Today we're down to 19,000 breeding pairs in South Africa, uh, which is less than 2% of the original wild population. We've got to find ways of being able to protect this species because within 10 years, they could go extinct. We were looking for a new interactive exhibit here at the Newport Aquarium, one that was able to share with folks, you know, the uh, just the wonder of penguins and give them the opportunity to see them up close, be able to touch, be able to learn and explore what's going on with African penguins around the world. They are very charismatic, and when you meet our birds, uh, you'll definitely see you know, how wonderful they are. Every animal has their own personality, just like every one of these penguins has their own personality. And getting to spend time with them, you'll definitely notice a few of them are a little bit more mischievous than others. Some are sweeter, some are a little grumpier than others. And so it's really fun to see their different characteristics. So we have the opportunity to inspire guests every single day, talking to the kids, telling them all about the penguins, and hopefully getting them to fall in love with them. There's a story to tell and having the birds being close to you and being able to really um, develop this story and make that personal connection because now you and everybody that meets those birds needs to help be those ambassadors going out and promote these birds around the world. You hear a lot about the oil spills, you hear a lot about people harming the penguins in some way, habitat loss, things like that. So there are a lot of reasons why penguins are declining. In the beginning of the, the early 1900s, we had over a million birds. Today, we have less than 50,000 birds. And over since 2007, when I started working with them, there was over 100,000 birds. And now, look at where we're sitting. The African penguin is a threatened species in South Africa. Um, it's listed as a threatened or protected species, uh, in simple terms, top species by the national government. The threats pretty much can be um, listed as changing habitat. Um, I think in the, in the 1700s, there were five or six million of these animals or birds. Uh, their main habitat, or the only habitat at that time was islands. Um, and they, interestingly enough, used to make nesting burrows in their own guano, in heaps of guano. Then the humans came along and removed the guano, um, which challenged um, the breeding success of the penguins. They had no longer had burrows or breeding um, habitat, so they often made nests outside, open to the elements, rain, flooding, uh, predators, etc. So that was a challenge. The sailors used to harvest eggs from the nests. Millions of eggs were harvested each year. Obviously, no eggs, no, no new chicks. So that was a massive blow to penguins. Um, I think we've gone from, I don't know, they can't think of the exact figures off the top of my head, but millions to possibly, I think there's 20,000 left in Southern Africa. The, the African penguin population at the moment, uh, when it was measured or counted in about the 1950s, uh, about 500,000 individuals of African penguin uh, between Namibia and South Africa uh, was counted. 
In the last 50 years, in 2010 when that census was taken again, uh, they only counted 45,000 individuals. That's a drop of nearly 91% in the population in over 50 years. That is how much of an impact us as humans are having on the environment just on one particular species. In the past, the threats that have hit the African penguin have been guano collection. Penguin poop makes incredibly good gunpowder and fertilizer. Uh, from there, they found penguin eggs, and those were harvested and used as a delicacy. Uh, luckily, in the late 1960s, the utilization of any penguin material was stopped. Unfortunately, um, overfishing, pollution, and climate change, all human-induced, have had major impacts on the population. The way that pollution has a major effect on African penguins is through oil spills. The reason that Samaric was established was because uh, one of South Africa's um, deepest industrial ports was built about seven kilometers away from the biggest population of African penguin in the world. Um, and that's here in Port Elizabeth. Um, and it became a case of not if an oil spill happens, but when it happens. And do we have the uh, expertise as well as the facilities to be able to deal with such an oil spill. To give an idea of the impact that oil spills can have, um, there's been two oil spills in South African history, two major ones, uh, both off uh, the Cape Town coast, uh, one in 1994 and one in 2000. And both those two oil spills have killed over 30,000 penguin individuals, which is a major amount considering that the population is sitting at 45,000 at the moment. So we, we have less oil spills now than we did in the 20th century, um, mostly due to better regulations and better enforcement of it, um, but it does often happen still. <laughs> so it does, uh, it does ruin their water, waterproofing capabilities, their feathers um, get waterlogged, they get hypothermia, and ultimately they can't feed if they go, can't go into the ocean with, with their waterproofing. If you think about it, I always tell people to put it into perspective. Um, we have 19,000 breeding pairs left on South Africa's coast, uh, which is the, the amount of birds that were affected with the treasure oil spill. So one big oil spill could actually affect that same amount of penguins. Sankarb as a bigger organisation has been around since 1968 and therefore the rescue, rehabilitation and release of seabirds but specifically endangered species like the African penguin. Um, since its, its establishment in 1968 Sankarb has rehabilitated and released successfully 90,000 birds um, so it's quite a big number if you look at, look at the state of our environment. Uh, they all have their specific characters and little personalities uh, and I always like to tell people about their different personalities um, because it gives you empathy for them. Uh, it's absolutely amazing working with them because they're just such ferocious little survivors. Uh, they put in every ounce of effort they can to survive, you don't have to do it for them. Um, which is also nice because they have such a great wild instinct. So when you put them back in the ocean, they forget completely about you. They don't even look, by, look back and say bye. <laughs> they just go back, which is lovely. It's very rewarding. I think it's a reflection on humanity for a species to go extinct, especially if our actions um, actually result in the extinction. I think what's quite important uh, to realize is that everything is connected from the algae that grows to the fish that eat that, to the fish that eat those fish, to the apex predators such as the great white sharks or the African penguins or anything else that feeds off those fish. Each of it plays a role. And if we start playing uh, with one of those populations or we start removing too much of it, it's going to have knock-on effects on the various populations and we're seeing that at the moment. For me personally, it would just be such a great loss because of their charisma and the wonderful animals that they are. Um, 
Then looking at the bigger environmental picture, if there is no more penguin, that also means there was no more fish. <laughs> so that makes a big, big impact on the human life as well. The African penguin forms part, a unique part of the of ecosystem here in the Western Cape, the cold temperate marine ecosystem. And it's one of the building blocks of the ecosystem that if you pull it out, um, there's no, no way of understanding what the implications will be. Um, so by allowing the penguin to go extinct and then the rhino and maybe the abalone, we slowly but surely are pulling away the building blocks of the ecosystems, um, not knowing exactly when the crash will be and not knowing what the implication of that crash will be to our survival, of, well, the survival of the planet and more simply for the survival of the human being. The, the way that anybody can help um, any of these oceans, any of the causes that we have, is education, creating that awareness. That awareness is absolutely key because if you don't know what is happening in your world, well, you can't exactly help it. So creating that education, creating that awareness and learning about all these various things is incredibly important. From there, change can happen. A very important thing to know that I want people to know is that the African penguin is in the situation it is because of human intervention um, and that it's not going to get out of the predicament it is without human intervention. So organisations like Sankob that are actively spending um, their time trying to recover this population um, needs the support. We all need to hold hands and actually contribute towards the conservation of the African penguin. I believe there's a lot of motivated people out there, young people, um, that can maybe come out with novel ways of assisting with the conservation, assisting with the monitoring, assisting with the research. Um, I believe the younger generation today uh, are sitting with our globe in their hands, the future of our globe in their hands. And they need to think out of the box and be motivated and come up with some creative uh, solutions. Everything's connected. Even if you are looking for animals in Africa, you can still help at home. And that's one of the most important messages that we can get across. If we can slowly move away from taking wild fishes and more, eating more sustainable, uh, you know, aquaculture, farmed fishes, you know, farmed seafoods, I think the marine environments will be more healthy for, for us and for all the animals that live in those environments around the world. You should be able to see that it's a hand-in-hand -hand thing. If we don't have a good environment to live in, if our water is not clean, if we don't have trees to create healthy environments, your quality of life is going to fail. As with any endangered animal, as with any animal that is going extinct, it would be a, a travesty uh, to not have something as big and as charismatic as the African penguin, let alone any penguin, is, is something for future generations to never see again. And that's, that's a very sad tale.